are you really? So you hear and lots of the spiritual and the metaphysical stuff, you're not your body and you're not your mind. That's not who you really are. So what gives with that? How do you explain how you're living your life and how you're responding to what happens in your environment to your physical body or to your emotional state? Well, it took me a long time to figure out what everybody was saying. Actually, quite a few years of studying lots and lots and lots of people till I found something that made sense. And I'm going to trust that you're here to hear what I share and it's going to make some sense to you, okay? You are not your body and you are not your mind, not on the long-term forever picture. Who you are is a conscious awareness of what's going on with your body, what's going on with your mind. Basically, the observer of what's happening with your body and with your mind. I'll explain it to you the way I understand it. So if you look at a lot of the early teachings, things like A Course in Miracles, if you've ever read Rhonda Burns 2021 book, The Greatest Secret, and there are many, more than a dozen teachers in there, and they're all teaching the same thing. And that's why it took me so long to make sense of it. You're never born, and you never die. If you're never born, and you can't ever die, that's who you are. <laughs> it's your awareness that goes lifetime to lifetime. And the way it made sense to me is, so we, I wondered, well, for many, 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 many years, I've been having glimpses of past life experiences, which perfectly explain talents and knowings that I have in this lifetime as Ali Bierman. And the way I put it all together, putting all these pieces together, who I am in the big picture, who's never born, who never dies, isn't Ali Bierman. I'm not going to tell you what my name is, but I do know what it is because I've known that for a really, really, really long time time and people who are very spiritual were telling me that for a long time when I had no clue what they were talking about and I thought well they're a little bit on the weird side they weren't weird they were just decades ahead of my understanding so when you have this spirit this that's you that's who you are and it goes on lifetime after lifetime forever in each lifetime, you can think of it as taking a ride in a certain existence so that you can gain experiences, so that you can gain talents, so that you can discover different knowings. So I'm Ali Bierman, but I had a lifetime in, it was actually in the Middle Ages in France. How do I know that? Because when I was reading some Middle French, I read it and I knew it and I understand, I understood it and nobody ever taught it to me. I just knew it. So it made sense. Oh, that's what that picture was from that lifetime. Then I had a picture of an existence in China. And many years ago, I had a close Chinese friend, and she used to kid me that I was more Chinese than she was because I love the culture. I love cooking Chinese food, like authentic Chinese food. Just going through your life, see where your talents are, how you can explain them. You're stepping into a vehicle in that lifetime, that incarnation, and you're gaining experiences and you're gaining talents in that lifetime. They don't go away. They register within who you are eternally. They'll explain all this knowledge, all these talents you have. Like there's so many things I can do that nobody has ever 
taught me. And there's no explanation except lifetimes that I've been through where I developed and used those talents. Now think about it yourself. What kind of talents, what kind of experiences, what kind of knowings are just part of you? Not because you studied it, not because anybody taught it specifically to you, but just because in a particular lifetime, that's who you were. Let me think of it another way. Who you are, your spirit, your soul, the eternal part of you is forever, but sometimes you want to take a ride in a body that gets you from point A to point B because that body and that mind has very particular experiences and knowings and talents and how else are you going to get the variety? So you get from point A, which would be the beginning of that lifetime, to the end of that lifetime. And then you go back into being just spirit, just awareness. No body, no mind, awareness. But now you have these additional talents, these additional knowings that you wouldn't have had without living that existence from point A to point B. And then you go on, and the next lifetime, you're going to have different experiences. And again, it'll take you from point A to point B. The Buddha was said to have been aware of living 500 lifetimes before he came to the knowing that he was the Buddha. We don't just have one or two lifetimes. They go on forever. Maybe they're going on in different worlds. I just know what I've seen that I'm pretty darn sure what I've seen was in this world. Does that mean lifetimes didn't happen in other worlds? I don't know. I don't see. I don't have an awareness. I just know how it makes sense that you're not bo your body and you're not your mind. However, you're the accumulation of the experiences that each body and each mind has. I hope that's making sense for you. I would love for you to comment and let me know how this is landing and what kind of questions you have, because honestly, I've been studying this stuff for decades, at least 20 years, because it passed me by. It passed me by for a long time. I didn't get what was being said. But now there's such a plethora out there of teachers teaching the same thing. And when you hear you're not your body, you're not your mind, if you happen to be in a human existence and you've got something emotionally upsetting or physically painful going on that's in the body and mind that you're occupying for that lifetime and so in all these teachers and I also say suffering is optional who you really are your spirit your eternal you is the observer. So when something not especially pleasing is happening in my life, I just say to myself, are you that discomfort? Or are you the one observing it? And I immediately know I'm the one observing it. And I can choose if I'm going to suffer. If there's a pain there, you know what? It hurts in your current body mind. And I can talk to my awareness and bring it in so I can move through the pain, through the discomfort, through the upset. Because what you resist persists. The way to get through the tough times are to literally go through them. And that way you get to come out 
the other end. The alternative, resisting it, that's when the pain gets worse. I thank you for joining me here today for Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. I would love for you to join our community so I can know who you are, where you're listening from, and what topics you're especially interested in. And you can tell me that in our Facebook group or join our community because when you join the community you get to spend a whole live chat with me and the other people in the community every single month get your questions asked and answered right there in real time i wish you to Enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment. Because you don't live out there. <laughs> you live in here. You live in your conscious awareness. And I look forward to seeing you here next time.